All right, welcome to Hanging Out with Hamza. This is Hamza. Today I am going to do a special episode where I kind of flip the script and let Zai take over. Uh, Zai is currently visiting Austin for a while, so I figured I'd do a another friendship episode with him. And yeah, thanks for listening. Stay tuned for Hanging Out with Hamza. Hey, y'all. This is Hamza, and I'm super happy we get to hang out for a little bit. All right, guys, welcome to Hanging Out with Hamza. Uh, Like I said earlier, this is a special episode where I am going to flip the script and pass the mic on to Zai, where he will be interviewing me for the most part. And I thought it would be cool for us to focus on our friendship and um, what we find most important in it. And hopefully this can help anybody else trying to figure out their values and their friendship and whatnot. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic on to Zai. All right. So uh, thank you for allowing me. I'm very excited to be a guest in this. Well, am I the guest or are you the guest? (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, if I'm the esteemed guest on your episode for now. Oh, well, I feel like it's like, you're the host, and then I am the host now, and then you're still the esteemed guest. Yeah, you're it's very self-serving. You're but, a super you know, host, but yeah. I'm giving myself the opportunity to interview Hamza and ask him a few things about uh, the things that got us together as friends and the connection that we built throughout the years and some of the components that really make us click and the things that we usually talk about. Let's start with something lighthearted. Let's talk about a personal style. Um, it's one of the things that we discuss. And as many of you know, he's a very stylish person. And on his Instagram, he posts things that, uh, like, you know, people that respond to his stories, there are times where it's like, oh, you're very stylish very fashionable or whatnot and that's something that we do talk about quite a bit like we send uh reels or images online of fashion items it's like people who are quite stylish and let's talk about uh your personal style uh for you how do you define your own personal style because throughout the years like that i've known you there have been uh, an evolution of what you look like and the clothes that you've worn and it's something that's quite apparent on your instagram presence which you know like how people see you yeah that's a good question thanks for giving me that honorable mention on that and uh yeah i, I do love style i think fashion is just a really cool way to present yourself to the world in a certain way and i think we did talk about it earlier. There's a difference between like being fashionable and having a sense of style. Yes. And I thought that was a really interesting way to put it because yeah, I've never been like a big brand or label person. There are certain like brands I really like and it's more so for the quality or the way it fits on me and whatnot. Um, But if I were to describe my style, I would say comfort is like the number one aspect of it and it's not comfort as in just like how does it feel like Mm -hmm. texture wise but comfort as in like how do I feel in it so I try to wear things that I feel most myself in Mm -hmm. and that can be a good and bad thing because sometimes I get myself in a box and I start to kind of like wear one thing consistently and I've tried to definitely step out of that comfort zone while still being in a certain comfort zone if that makes sense so um for instance i used to wear like skinny jeans a lot and like skinny pants because i'm a skinny guy and i thought that was like the best way to kind of accentuate how i look but then i realized now that you can go slightly baggy and you can wear flared out jeans like i'm currently wearing like cowboy cut Mm -hmm. jeans which is something i never thought i would wear before i I remember it was when you were on that skinny jean phase and then we are like talking, I was like, just wear something a little bit more loose. I remember you saying, like, I don't see myself wearing baggy jeans. It was like, they're not baggy. Yeah, yeah. You and know? I think that's been a nice, like, kind of evolution, especially as 
being friends with you, which is a big component of it is being able to like get honest feedback and also to be able to push my boundaries while um, getting, you know, certain input from you on whether it does fit me or and whatnot. And sometimes like, you know, you give me honest feedback, like, oh, that doesn't look good or that doesn't suit your figure. So it's nice to kind of have somebody to like vibe off of with. And I think being a guy that lives in America as a straight guy, sometimes it's hard to have these conversations mm -hmm. with my straight guy friends because um, it's not really a commonplace thing. I think it's gotten better in the yeah. last couple of years, but I would say like, for instance, in high school, I would be deemed as metrosexual for paying attention to, word. yeah, which is very interesting to me because it just was, it never made sense to me that wanting to pluck my unibrow and keep mm -hmm. things clean was considered metrosexual or above a certain standard of normal. So I think it's nice that things have become a bit more um, socially acceptable and if not like even more acceptable or, um, you or know, celebrated. Yeah. Complimentary. Like now, like people actually appreciate when I share mirror pictures, which like I, you know, for the record, it took a lot of um, confidence to start doing that. Like it's not something that I did thinking like, oh, I look great in this. It was more so like, oh, I'm going to dip my toes. Like I, like I like what I wear. I like how I look in it, but I definitely don't think I'm fashionable enough to like just be sharing this stuff. But then like here and there, I would get like little compliments and it was really nice to hear that stuff. And it was nice to hear like even guys be like, whoa, where'd you get those pants? Yeah. Like, you know, like where can I get this and that? And so it started to really inspire me to like post more because then I would be able to like have more conversations with um, guys and girls about fashion and all that stuff. And so it really became more enjoyable to do that. So now when I post mirror pictures, you can take it as like, oh, this guy really loves himself. He's posting a lot of mirror, but it's more just like, I really like, like sharing this It's basically like art. Like it's like a creative mm -hmm. thing you do and then you share it with the world and they give you feedback on like their thoughts on it or whatnot. And, you know, I can either take it with a grain of salt or like, you know, and just accept the compliments. But I just think it's a fun way to kind of like interact with people and share a certain camaraderie over that. I remember having a conversation with you about it. You asked, I was like, am I fashionable? And then I said, you're not fashionable. No. You're very stylish. And I think during that first conversation, when I brought it up, you were like, you don't think I'm fashionable? I feel like there's like a hint of like... Yeah, well, I just didn't know yeah. what defined And then I was like, it's... And I think it's the fact that it's like, you know, fashionable, like perspective wise, I feel like fashion is pushing the envelope, doing things that makes waves. It sets the trends and all that. But I think you have great personal style and with personal style, it's not just about the clothes that you wear. It's not just about that, but it's a combination of you wearing the clothes and the confidence that you exude whenever you're in those uh, clothes that you're wearing, you know, like when you take your photos on the, in the mirror and you have that sense of like, damn, I look good. Okay. You know, it's like that feeling, people feel that people see that because it's an energy that you put out in the world. It's like, Hey, I'm very confident in what I'm wearing. And that is very apparent whenever you are, uh, doing all of those things. And for the people who are not privy to certain things about him, he changes, like, for example, going out, just leaving the house, it takes a while. Outside of wearing scrubs, if it's something like outside clothes, he would go back and forth, uh, his closet and change, and then just, like, look at the mirror, feel like it feels right for him. If not, he'll go back. And then, like, after a while, you'll see, I was like, Oh, he went back to that first one, <laughs> which says a lot about him. He really cares about what he puts out in the world. And that's something very commendable because as you've said earlier, historically speaking, when straight men used to do that, they're deemed, you know, metrosexual. And in the gay community during that time when that the word came out is like one more meter and you're a homosexual. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that fashion and style is more in the forefront with social media 
because people are now more adventurous and there's there's a back and forth of like are you just going to be a clone of everybody else or are you going to find something that you think is yours and i feel like with you you've kind of like you know settling into the thing that is more yours the cowboy boots for example talk about what made you feel like i'm a cowboy boots person now like what happened with that uh i mean it's again it's just like a comfort thing i like you know i'm a movie buff i love movies so much and i think movies and music are such a big part of me and i get into these phases like where i'm into like a certain genre or a certain type of music and that bleeds over into other aspects of my life mm -hmm. and I mean, I live in Texas. I am very proud to live in Texas. I love Austin. I love the culture here. I think, you know, politics aside, I think it's just has such a really contagious um, personality to it. I love like the pride it has. And so, you know, with that being said, I've always just loved like that cowboy aesthetic. And I love even country music when I went to Chicago mm -hmm. for a while. So I always wanted to wear cowboy boots and get a cowboy hat and do all that stuff. But I was always like, no, I'm a brown guy. Like, I can't do that. And, you know, like, that's not for my type of person. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like, recently, I was like, why am I boxing myself into this, like, this personality or this, like, this certain type of person I should be when in reality I can wear whatever I want to mm -hmm. wear. I can do whatever I want. Like, wearing cowboy boots does not define my limitations or whatever as a brown guy so yeah i just kind of like dip my toes like no pun intended like into into a cowboy boot. Boot. yeah and i i was like okay let me just see how these how these feel when i wear them and then i you know i tried them on in a store and then i went to like a cowboy boot store and like try to walk around in them and then i i get into these like really deep dive research phases that are, you know, are the boots made for walking yeah they totally were and they're super comfortable and uh that's just what they do but they, yeah, I, I thought they were super comfortable. I felt comfortable in them, which again, like I mentioned, is like, I felt like it was a, something that suited me. And then, um, yeah, I started to deep dive research like I usually do about like cowboy boots, how they're made, mm -hmm. what defines a good boot. And I went down the whole YouTube rabbit hole. And then I got lucky enough to come across like two boots I really fell in love with. Like one I got from a thrift store and it was like this cowboy thrift store which is really cool and they were already broken in and they were alligator skin they're, they're super really cool pretty. yeah and i was just super happy with them and i've been wearing them ever since and yeah every time i wear them i get compliments on them and mm -hmm. like nobody's ever said like what are you doing wearing those you're a brown guy like mm -hmm. that whole thought process was just in my head so yeah. it like kind of again further emphasize that there's a lot of things I can do and a lot of the limitations were just set by myself. And so that's basically been the theme of like a lot of my like fashion forays into like different things. So yeah, I'm glad that, um, I'm glad I did the cowboy boot thing. If you're somebody that's thinking about doing it, highly recommend giving it a shot. And, uh, I'm glad Zai approves of it too. Cause yeah, getting like, you know, constructive feedback is always important to me and Zai really liked them too. And it was nice to you know, get that feedback from people I love as well. My only concern, like every time I see him wear it, I was like, are they comfortable? They're so comfortable. People don't realize like... Well, also because like I have wide feet and I yeah. have thick calves. Funny, like before I got the cowboy boots, the other boots I had were those YSL, what were they? Oh yeah, the Chelsea boots. Yeah, no, they weren't Chelsea boots. Well, yeah, yeah they, they were, were but Chelsea's. what were they called? They were like a, the, oh, the very famous ones. Oh yeah, like the camel ones, the camel Chelsea yeah, I had black and mm -hmm. uh, camel ones, but that was like my first boot I got. So yeah, for, so the first boots I got were actually those YSL Wyatt boots, and they were kind of inspired by um, cowboy boots, but they were designed by Hedy Slimane, who was a famous designer at the time. And I fell in love with those because I originally saw like, I think David Beckham's son wearing them with skinny jeans, and I was like, oh, that's a vibe. <sighs> And I got those. In Brooklyn. Her, yeah. And I remember I got made fun of for wearing those. Actually, Harry Styles wore them too. He was a big YSL and a Wyatt boot guy. Like if you look at his old stuff before he went like um, in the style direction he's in, he was a very much a skinny boot, YSL boots person. And um, 
That's funny because th that was my inspiration before I was obsessed with yeah. Harry. But I really thought he was a stylish person. So I got those boots. And it's funny because I was made fun of by my brother and sister-in-law and everyone because the heels were so high. Uh -huh. And they were like, that's like you, you're a guy wearing high heels. And I was like, again, like it, it's one of those things where like I've always kind of done things stylistically that I've been made fun of at some point by friends or family. And... I mean, this isn't like, uh, I mean, it's a little flex, but eventually it becomes stylish. And then, you know, for some reason, I now I'm going to call my brother out because his ass always does this. He'll make fun of me. And then a year or two later, he will wear that same shit and then act like nothing happened. And I'm going to call him out on that because he's done that with my boots. And he's he's borrowed those same boots he made fun of me for. And um, he does that with sneakers. You know, he's done it with a lot of stuff. So just giving him a quick shout out. Um, but yeah, so the, anyways, back to the boots thing. So yeah, I got those and I remember I really liked how I felt wearing boots and I never thought I would have been a boot person cause I used to always wear sneakers. And then, yeah. So then transitioning to the cowboy boots wasn't that much harder mm -hmm. because cowboy boots are the same. It's like, they have a really high heel and people don't realize that it's like you, you kind of associate cowboy boots as being manly and stuff, but it's funny because at the end of the day, they're like also like high heels for men and well, Here's the thing. Yeah. Men are the ones that wore high heels first. Yeah. I mean, Louis the 14. Yeah. I think it's funny how we kind of set these standards and yeah. what's manly and what's not. And then we realize, like, ultimately, like, there's so many similarities between yeah. female and male fashion. So. Yeah. It's like Louis the 14th was like so big on wearing heels. Yeah. And like, blouses and all this during, stuff. During that time. So it's like what really makes like a man's shoe now. Right? right. So thank you for that. Thanks. You know, it's like, I think when you, when you started talking about the YSL boot, like I think during that time, yeah, I think I wasn't such a big fan of Hedy Slimane as the creative director of YSL during that time, because it like, you know, everything just became so ubiquitous during his tenure. Mm -hmm. I think maybe by the time you started wearing it, like yeah. what, the 2010s, 2015, something like that. No, later. I wore it like yeah. 2019 after. Yeah. So I think there was it's like so far from when it first came out yeah. and i'm the type of person who's like once i develop a certain dislike towards something i kind of hold on to it it's not the best thing to do i'm and i'm learning to be like a little bit more open to like certain things but i think during that time like it was just so like everywhere in the early yeah. 2000 where i had such strong fashion perspectives i mean it's just like he created a aesthetic which i love like the punk rock aesthetic and yeah i was definitely late to the party but i i loved how he kind of created a certain vibe like daft punk was a big mm -hmm. inspiration for me like i said music and fashion yeah. bleeds together very oh, well definitely and so seeing daft punk with the leather jackets and the all black and the black boots that really influenced me and then seeing harry styles wearing that stuff um so yeah that was definitely uh basically like a condensed not an uncondensed form of like how I got into it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I also, I mean, I don't, I also want to give you credit for your style. And I think like, that's something I admire about I being care able... less about things. No, like it's the same thing with you. You have a very specific um, idea of who you are right. as a person stylistically, like the stuff you wear, I don't see a lot of people wearing and it looks good on you. You're comfortable in it and it suits you well. I think like we have completely different styles. Very. Like, we uh, look like we're going to different places every single day. Yeah. But... I remember there was the IPO in New York. I remember like when we went to Cipriani's and it was like the formal night and all that. Everybody, you know, it was like just to the nines. You were wearing, I think it was a navy or charcoal suit. Mm, navy. And then I was wearing a bright blue jacket and a Hawaiian shirt inside. And we look like we're going to do different places to different events because yeah. it's like, I think it's such distinct styles. Yeah. And it's so nice that, you know, like, we do have like commonalities between us, obviously like hoodies and all that stuff but outside of those, that intersection everything is yeah worlds apart but it's cool because we have like a mutual respect for our styles and yeah like, i would never wear what he's wearing he would never wear what i'm wearing but... i mean i could yeah historically speaking like i've i've dabbled yeah into like every 
potential styles. You've so gone through all of it. I've gone through it, but I think my current style is very much on comfort and airy. Mm -hmm. That's why it's like I'm always on linen pants, Hawaiian shirts, because and linen anything if I could because and anything large and oversized, especially with pants. All right. So you mentioned a few people that kind of inspired you. You said Harry Styles, Daft Punk, when they were wearing all like the leather, the boots and all that. Outside of those individuals, like who do you think really, you know, makes an impact on your style? Is it like a group of people? Is it a certain category in life? Or is it a specific person that you kind of model your whole personal style to? Um. I mean, there's definitely like certain celebrities, but I would say for the most part, it's a kind of like a snapshot thing I do where like, whether it's social media or we're just walking around Austin or um, watching a movie or something, if I see something and I'm like, like, I won't even specifically recall it, but I'll see something that I really like and subconsciously it'll just stay in my head. And then at some point in time, like I'll be looking for something and I'll come across something that reminded me of that moment or that person or whatever they were wearing. And mm -hmm. I'll try to get something similar um, or just like naturally I'll see what's in my closet and try to replicate a lot of that. Um, but also it's a lot of the times just me kind of like getting clothes that I've always wanted to get and then just mixing and matching things and seeing what goes together. And that's been mm, something I do a lot. And I mentioned this to Zai and he knows I do this, but there are some nights where it's kind of a meditative thing to me and it probably, it sounds ridiculous now that I repeated it to Zion, like kind of realized this isn't normal for most people, but there are some nights uh, where I will literally just have music on in the background and I will just be trying different outfits on in different combinations and just seeing how those things look together. And I'll do it for like one to two hours and I'm not sure if it's really healthy, but it makes me happy doing it. And like, I will, I told, told Zai, like sometimes he won't hear from me for a while because I will put my phone away, put music on and just start trying stuff on. And it's like, I'm having like my own little fashion show, like in my apartment, but it's like, not like I'm just like flaunting it around, but it's like, I'm just trying to see like what goes together. Like, okay, I could wear this outfit next time I go to dinner or I can wear this on a date or I can wear this. Like when I go traveling, like I, can, I kind of like, mentally start to compartmentalize how these outfits are going to like be worn together and um it's a lookbook yeah and zai told me like he's like why don't you just start creating like a lookbook out of these things and i never thought to do that but i think i will now but yeah a lot of the times you guys see those mirror pictures a lot of those mirror pictures are also me trying on those different outfits taking a photo just to kind of like remember what the outfit looks like and then replicating it later on um but yeah that's usually how I kind of figure out my style and what I'm going to wear. I don't really have a specific influence, but obviously celebrity figures help. I would say I don't really have a specific uh, figurehead or a style icon. I have like, you know, bits and pieces from everywhere, but for the most part, it's just a lot of trial and error in front of the mirror. With the, the mirror bears witness of all the looks. Yeah. It's gone through a lot of. Yeah. And I remember like, you know, sometimes he would send like these pictures, like, you know, just like a series. I was like, oh, he's in that mood right now. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's adorable. It's like, it's really nice. Yeah. And it's really, it, I like, I mean it when I say it's meditative, like it's yeah. something like when you get into that flow state, I feel like I kind of get into like my own personal flow state and I have good music going on, no plans for the night, just relaxing. And like, I get to do it. And like, yeah, it's just a nice way to kind of have some me time yeah. while doing something I really love. All right, so with all of that being said, what do you think makes a person stylish? Yeah, I've thought about it a lot lately because there are times when I see friends and I'm like, that person was so close to wearing this correctly, but their size was off or their mm -hmm. fit was off. And I think it's like three things. Like the first thing is definitely like your like knowing your body and knowing like your ratio i think everybody has a different like ratio in terms of like legs yeah. to torso and there's like a certain way to kind of accentuate 
that or also kind of take attention away from it. Mm -hmm. And I'll give an example of my tall friend. His name is Osman. He is six foot five plus and like the guy has long legs. Mm -hmm. Like hard to avoid that when you're that tall. Like you're going to look goofy in certain outfits if you don't size yourself accordingly. And I give him credit. Like he knows how to dress to the T and to look great in his outfits because it all comes down to like the fit. He knows exactly like how long his pants need to be. He knows how long his shirt needs to be. He knows what colors to wear to kind of like accentuate like Mm -hmm. his height and everything um, and patterns and everything. So I like, I think in situations like that, like you really need to understand your body, how things fit you, what colors look good on you. And like, it's not something that comes to you immediately, but I mean, there's, that's what YouTube is for. And that's what like the internet's for. You can really like learn a lot of that stuff. Like you can go to a stylist, you can go to, a tailor and a lot of times get input from that or you can talk to Zai or like get a tailor yeah tailors or are... learn how to sew clothes or learn to yeah fix your own clothes yeah and like there's a lot of jeans I've gotten in my past and like a lot of you know tops I've got like I'm a pretty skinny person to an extent so like there's a lot of things I have to get tailored or altered and like you know like I'm 29 30 and there's not a lot of 29 30 pants out there so when i get pants it's usually 30 31 or 30 33 and like then i'll get them altered or i'll try to like get them fitted so that when i wear them they're not baggy at the bottom mm-hmm. and stuff like that so yeah fit is the first thing i think like understanding your ratio is really important uh, i'd say the next thing is i mean you mentioned this at dinner today is like confidence and i think you know i wouldn't say i'm the most confident person in the world but when it comes to like dressing well like i i am confident in that because i know what i'm wearing is something that i love wearing and i'm happy wearing it and it makes me feel confident and happy and you've practiced it yeah and i've worn it 20 times in my own apartment staring in the mirror so i kind of know to an extent that this is right yeah i've gone through a lot of uh trial and error to Mm -hmm. it but i think yeah like as i says like i i do wear my stuff with confidence because i'm very proud of the stuff that i own i'm very proud of like the way i wear things because i think that's an important component of it is like taking pride in the things that you wear and you own and whatnot so i try my best to be that way there are times when like i push the bar and like i'll wear something that i've never worn before and i'll Mm -hmm. go out in public and feel a little bit self-conscious about it but it's just one of those things where you just kind of get used to it over time yeah um But yeah, like the cowboy boots was like an example of that. Like, you know, first day I wore it, I was a little bit weary. People were looking at me and stuff. And then they started to get compliments. And then it just kind of builds up that that understanding that like most of the time it's just you building that um, that idea in your head. And then I'd say the third thing is just basically like realizing that labels aren't really what defines fashion for you. And I think that's been the biggest um mistake i've seen in just everyone especially with like straight males or just like men in general like there's a lot of times when they think like oh i'll get i'll get a gucci belt i'll get like a prada top or whatever and it's like that's not really gonna look better on you it's just gonna look like you are wearing something expensive yeah. you can literally get like a t-shirt from like h&m or uniqlo and if it fits well then like it's going to look way better than a 200 dollars Mm t-shirt um so that took a i mean that didn't take a lot of time for me to realize because when i was like a college student i couldn't afford anything so i would try to find what was just cheap enough to look just as good as whatever the more expensive version of that was and it got really easy to figure that stuff out and i mean i thrift a lot like i have no qualms with like getting cheap stuff and making it somehow look good with uh inexpensive yeah well i mean cheap it's cheap to me and like i i'm taking it that way you can call it cheap for me but um yeah i think that's the most important like these jeans were actually thrifted and um i know his eye has his own feelings about it but um yeah i just think at the end of the day like labels are they're great to a certain extent like you know i love levi's i'll always like get levi's jeans because i like certain aspects of that but I don't think you necessarily have to buy expensive stuff yeah. to look good. Yeah, I agree. That's a great definition of a personal stylist because those are the things that truly really matter, right? Are you comfortable? Are you confident? 
And do you look like you're wearing the clothes and the clothes not wearing you? Mm -hmm. I think that's what I learned early on. You have to take control of what you're wearing. Like whatever it is that you're wearing shouldn't dictate your personality or how you should act. Yeah. Right? So um, how you defined it for you, so those are such great qualities that uh, and things that people can like pattern them, like, you know, pattern their personal style because it really pushes you to be confident. It pushes you to know who you are and tell the world, hey, here I am, right? Yeah, like, I'm presenting myself to the world with much confidence and much pride. Yeah. And as I've said early on, like, it's something that you exude all the time. It, you know? So, like, it, it's really great. So. Yeah, and I think the best part of like all of those points is it makes it more accessible to everyone. Like I think like all those th reasons I gave, like if anything makes it easier to be stylish, like or easier to kind of find your style because you're like, you're taking away a lot of these uh, restrictions. Like, you know, like you're kind of the whole like aspect of like expensive stuff. It's like once you realize that you don't have to buy expensive stuff, now you have like a whole world of like options now. Yes. And you just need maybe one tailor with that same amount of money you would spend on that one Gucci, whatever. If you get a nice tailor, you can turn like 12, 20 shirts into perfect fitting shirts that will look like a hundred bucks on you. And yes. So, definitely. Yeah. The perfect fit is it's something that you dictate. Yeah. Right. If the perfect fit for you is something closer to the body, and that's great because yeah. you carry it with confidence. Yeah. Right. As if it's something bigger, then yes, you know that's something that you're going to be confident and you're going to be comfortable in. Yeah. So know the rules so that you can break them. Granted, I do want to also add that I do have certain outfits that are expensive. For instance, like suits. Yeah. And like sneakers or something but i think in those aspects it's it's not really like me wearing it um it, it's more down, down to the materials and like mm -hmm. you know the quality of the actual item and you know like i see those as things i'm going to have for like 10 to 20 years or whatever like i don't consider those things that i'm just going to have for a certain like style era or like a certain trend yeah so that's the other thing to consider. Like, it is okay to spend more on things if if it's quality and long term use that you would take into account. Yeah, and also, if you want to buy it, buy it. Like, yeah, you don't have to justify it to anyone, right? right. Like, if it feels good and you want to buy it, get it. That's true. Yeah, and it's like you don't have to make reasons like, oh, it's the quality and all that stuff. Like, sometimes you're like, I put it on. Yeah. I felt super good. I'm going to get it. Yeah. Honestly, that's the that's what ultimately made me start to feel more confident was like I told you being in the apartment trying on things is like I'm also subconsciously building up my confidence to wear these outfits because I'm wearing them in my apartment continuously and walking around it and like looking in the mirror in it continuously. So then by the time it, it's time for me to wear them outside, I'm already used to it. Like I wore it in my apartment. I know how it looks. I know how it feels. So I'm no longer doubting like, oh, do I look ridiculous in this right now? Mm -hmm. And so that's the other thing is just kind of like really building that self-confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. And it all starts with you in front of the mirror and just kind of like giving yourself that pep talk. Yeah. It's a very different approach than I take. I just have the audacity. Yeah. Was I? Just... <laughs> I was like, Whatever I have, I'll put it on. And then it's like, this is good. As I walks out with no fucks together. But he just pulls them off that way. Well, it's not all the time, but hey. No, it's like, it's not always successful, but... You definitely... You know, it's like, you just have to make it seem like it is. Yeah, it's... And really it makes confident. a difference. Yeah. All right. So, we've talked about personal style on, like, you know, many conversations that we've had. Personal style is something that's like, you know, very close to your heart, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you try on something and you're like, oh, it's embarrassing. That boils down into something that makes you vulnerable. And vulnerability is also something that I feel like is an ingredient in the dynamic that we have. So. What a transition. Huh? What a transition. Why? I like how you try like try to mesh those two. I mean, it, it's it's good. True. Yeah, no, it's good. All right. So with 
vulnerability. How do you think it impacted our dynamic or your friendships in general? Uh, we started getting close during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going through a lot of different things during that time. So a lot of people and a lot of times that particular circumstance created an environment where vulnerability just happens. But how do you think that made a difference in our dynamic? Um, I think I became more vulnerable with you when I was going through a pretty rough breakup. Um, I was pretty vulnerable with a lot of people, but I think there was something about our connection where you just kind of were very receptive and understanding. And um, again, being like a straight male and talking to other men about it, it was very much like, oh, you get over it. Like, just go date some girls or go, you know, hook up and stuff like you'll be over and whatnot. And I think like that wasn't very helpful to me at the time. And I had female friends too, but I was so just in a weird headspace about it. And yeah, I think just we connected on that front and I just got like a good feeling from just our interactions. And I kind of just, I don't know, like I, I feel like there was a very natural um, inclination to reach out and talk to you about stuff and trust you with a lot of personal things. And I think a lot of our friendship is based on that vulnerability and it's inspired me in a lot of ways to be more vulnerable with other friends and just kind of be more open in that regard. Uh, and I'm still working on a lot of that, but, um, I think just like with any friendship, vulnerability is probably like the biggest um, indicator of the quality of a friendship mm -hmm. uh, because you're kind of opening yourself up to somebody and being yeah vulnerable like you're you're putting yourself in a very like compromising position yeah so. and like it it could go really downhill if with the wrong person or it could be a really strong bond and so I think that's what connected us. I think you were very empathetic and compassionate towards what I was going through. And um, I just think there was a lot of just positive um, reflection. Looking back, like mm. there's nothing but positivity I see in it. And any times there were any kind of like bumps or whatever, it was stuff that we immediately like communicated, took care of. And I think that those are like really important aspects of friendship to me. Um, I just recently like kind of like broke up with the best friend that I had for a long time. And I, I love that guy. Like we, we had been friends for so long and having to like end that friendship was truly like heartbreaking still is, but I look back on it and I think like a lot of the vulnerability was like lacking in it. I think that was a lesson to me also that the quality of a lot of my friendships now are dependent on that vulnerability and it is a risk that you take sometimes and you, you can lose friendships that way, but you also garner like really good high quality friends yeah. too. So yeah, I think, uh, the basis of our friendship, I would say is vulnerability. Every time I have any kind of like issue I'm dealing with in my life or like struggle I'm going through, it's pretty easy to like tell you about it. And then it been vice versa. Like you've been a lot better about it. I think for the most part, you used to be a little bit more keep to yourself but you're, yeah. you're better at opening up as well which has been nice and i think um yeah and just going forward like i i don't see that ever being something that would be the weakest part of our friendship if anything i think that's like the main component and then everything else is like a byproduct of it yeah i think it's something that i'm working on it's not something that comes by default and tr i'm also learning to allow you to in those moments, just like share, say whatever it is that you're feeling. And because as somebody who puts out fire for a living, for somebody who is very much a fixer, it's the default, you know, it's something that I'll be like, all right, so how do we fix it? How can we make it better? But I think with you, like I've learned, it's something that you've talked to me about. That's like, you know, like, okay, I can do it. I can 
sort these things out. And sometimes you just need to vent. And I think there have been times like, hey, how can I support you? And because it's it also is a reminder for me to be like, hey, it's you don't have to fix everything. I don't have to fix things. And just allowing you to be vulnerable at that moment is what's important or it might be what you need. Mm-hmm. It might not, you know, you don't need a solution. Yeah. And it's like, it's not a solution that you need right now. You need somebody to just like, listen. And I think that's also something that in this friendship and this dynamic, it's something that I am learning. Yeah. And as you said, like, you know, I'm trying to be more open to uh, sharing my feelings. And we were playing, we're not really strangers. And I was sharing a little bit more stuff, like how I'm feeling and all that. Because it's typically not something that I would say out front without a prompt. Uh, you know, like, sometimes it's like, are you doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, are you okay? Cool. And then, like, I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And he's like, are you sure? I was like, okay, I'm not. So our friendship has really allowed me to be a little bit more open, like a, a little more allowing of people to listen to me because I think I've gotten so used to being on the other end of it, just like I'm always listening. And sometimes I don't think people are interested in what I'm saying or are not interested in how I'm feeling. And also, I was like, I don't want to put that burden on them. Like, you know, I'm paying a professional for all of this. But there's also comfort in having your circle support you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that I find very important. That's why I'm opening up a little bit more. Uh, Or, you know, just more vulnerable. Like, open up to your closest friends. It's going to be okay. If you trust them, let them be there for you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm very, very lucky to be one of the people in your life that you are vulnerable with. And so, and again, like, I don't know what it is that you see exactly in me or the people in your circle that you trust enough to be vulnerable around with. So tell me what type of energy, what type of behavior what type of characteristic do they usually have that allows you to bring down those walls and share your feelings with them uh i don't know if there's any specific characteristic i think it's more just a vibe or gut feeling i get Mm -hmm. and for the most part i feel like i've been pretty on point with it unless it's a romantic connection i feel like i'm pretty bad at those but I think in terms We're of, not about that right now. yeah, no, but in terms of like friends, for the most part, it's just something that like I feel and then I open up a little bit and I see how like the reaction is and then I kind of go from there. But yeah, I, I don't do it with everyone. I do it with very specific people and those people who are listening are very much aware of it. And unfortunately, if you are listening and I haven't been vulnerable to you, it's nothing personal. It's just I also need to I need to be protective to an extent too. Like, you know, it's it's like it's a very it's a very sensitive thing. But um yeah, I I can say for a fact, like Sean, I just went on a Dominican trip with recently. Uh Sean is one person I really love and adore as a friend and he and I connected really easily at some point just over the phone and like we just started talking and like it was like one of our first or second conversations on the phone just because we were both figs dentist ambassadors Mm -hmm. and I just like I just knew like this guy was a homie and like there was something more to him and we just clicked and we've ever since then been um very close and personal and i've opened up a lot to him and he's done the same and during this dominican trip it's the same thing you know like we just really like we when we went on the this dominican trip i remember figs was like hey like you know we can get y'all individual rooms or double rooms like just let us know like if you guys want a room together let us know but like we're happy to get y'all individual rooms and sean and i both individually messaged them and were like, Hey, can we room? Like, can I room with Sean? And, and Sean was like, Can I room with Hamza? And like, eventually I texted him, I was like, Hey, man, I hope 
this isn't like rude or whatever, but like I asked to room with you without even asking you. He's like laughing. He's like, I did the exact same thing. So like we just both were like so excited to just connect and like hang out. So we were, yeah, after clinics, uh, after clinical and everything, we would go, you know, hang out uh, with the groups. And then at the end of the night, we would go back to our rooms and just we would talk the whole night, just catching up on stuff, talking about how we're feeling, what we're going through, personal life stuff. And it was just cool because we were just two dudes talking about our feelings and just like, you know, like it was so refreshing. And I think that was one of the highlights of my trips was just like having these vulnerable conversations with a guy I really uh, love and respect as a colleague and a friend and uh, like a confidant and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think those types of connections for me are like gold now. So like the moment I'm able to like express vulnerability and receive it as well in the same capacity, uh, I really hold those in high regard now because I feel like that's like friendship currency now. Yeah. And it's so important to me. Yep. Sean, I'd like to reclaim my time back. <laughs> I don't have enough time with him anymore. So yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, that was a good question. Though. I think <laughs> vulnerability is, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. And, and now like, you know, we talk about vulnerability and it's something that it's not easy to do you have to allow yourself to trust this person and before you can share your intimate details with them mm -hmm. but i think one of the biggest things that can come out of that is now from the library of information that you have about this person from when they were vulnerable with you you're like, oh my God, you're growing into something. You start to cheer them on. Yeah. Right? So I think that's another thing in our dynamic that I I personally feel and hold very dear. It's like the whole cheering on each other. I think that is one thing aside from the privilege of you being vulnerable around me. I feel very lucky that you're a partner when it comes to successes. As you said earlier, we've connected when you were in a very, very vulnerable position. But during this entire time too, anytime there is a success, anytime that there is something that is to be celebrated, you're also there to cheer me on. And I do the same thing with you. And I'm very, very proud of all the things that you've done. Uh, so each time you go to your mission trips, you know, you've gone to Kenya you got to the Dominican Republic, and each time you're there, I'm like so excited to see you come back and have such a, a refreshed perspective on your career. You know, debt is not the easiest thing. It's hard work. It's, it's not very much appreciated. And whenever you come back from those trips, you're like, I got this. I can do this again. You've explained to me how dentistry is such a combination of not science and art and creativity and it allows you to do so many things with your hands and it's something that you enjoy like you know just this this past couple of days we were playing we're not really strangers you were doing something with your hands you were like unstitching something he was like dude this is so relaxing and i was like yeah that's why i love sewing so the whole cheering on your friends is like something that I love doing with you because you do all the good things that is also good for yourself, but also good for the community. And I love seeing that. Thanks for it. Um, one of the things that really resonated with me was from one of the previous guests in this podcast from Katie Duke. This is something that I've always, always kept close to my heart ever since I heard you say it like a while back it's like say the name of the people that you love in room in rooms full of opportunity or however that goes exactly you tell people about the people that you love or the people that are great the things that they do i always have a friend that i talk about when it comes to certain topics and for you, it's the, oh, he's my friend that uh, has like really great taste in music. I have a few friends that have like really great taste in music. 
you are like such music inspirations to me because I am very much, you know, I have a very specific uh, sound and taste in music, but you opened me up to new things. And like this weekend, like Hermanos Gutierrez was something that, you know, he was introduced to by a friend in Dominican Republic and he went on a deep dive and I have been uh, like exposed to it this entire uh, week that I've been with him. Or as I like to call them, Brothers Gomez. Brothers, Go Brothers Rodriguez. <laughs> I was like, who was that last night? Because we saw them at South by Southwest. And it was like, oh, Brothers Gutierrez? Brothers Rodriguez? Yeah. Brothers Rodriguez. <laughs> Brothers Rodriguez. Like Armando's Gutierrez. Yeah. I think you got it. Feel free to cancel him for that one, guys. Oh. Latina community. His name is Latina Zion. community, please do not cancel me. <laughs> Anyways. I am Latino adjacent because the Spaniards colonized the Philippines. Yeah. His last name is Los Hito, so he's allowed to say this. In the last year, it was Kate Trinata and this year it's Armando's Gutierrez. This year is Armando's Gutierrez. I always talk about him when it comes to that, uh, because it's something that he's very, very passionate about. And as he's, you know, as he's mentioned in the previous episodes, that you know, this is a passion. This is a passion project, and it, like those types of things that he's very passionate about, I cheer him on when he's not around. I cheer him on with people that may not know him or potentially know him because. I keep a very small circle. How do you do the, the whole cheering on uh, friendship? Because I have been a recipient of it. I don't really like complimenting people in the sense of like, sometimes people are very much fishing for compliments. And so I'm very, I guess, I, I mean, I guess I'm kind of selfish with giving compliments, but in a way of like, if I do compliment you, like I really mean it, like I don't just hand them out. And it's probably not a great thing sometimes because sometimes people just want a nice compliment to cheer them up, but I don't like dishing them out unless I actually mean it and like it comes from the heart. And yeah, so I think, you know, that's the one way I like to like cheer my friends on is like, you know, to try to be as honest and genuine as I can be. And feel like it's like somewhat earned and um yeah one way of doing it is definitely through words of affirmation but also i think my biggest compliment is if i introduce you to my other close friends and for me that's probably the highest compliment you can receive because i value my close friends so much so if i if i introduce you to my close friends then um that's just something that, you know, you can take in a high regard because I'm letting you into this like very intimate world of mine and your, your capacity to be known in that intimate world now is a high compliment to who you are as a person. So that's just something that I think that is um, my way of kind of like cheering my friends on or like kind of promoting them in a certain stature and like, um, yeah, outside of that, like I'll always try to cheer friends on in their successes or like what they've achieved. Um, I'm very competitive in nature and like I always want to be the best at everything. So like if I see a friend doing better than me, I'll cheer them on, but it also inspires me in a way to do more as well. So that's why I always like having friends that are successful and uh, highly capable in whatever it is, because I think like it's also a way to motivate me to be a better person. And I think that's another thing that I think is important in my friendship circles is like everybody is really supremely talented and incredible at, at something in their life. And that's something that I really admire and look up to. And I think that's very important to me as well, because obviously I wouldn't be cheering them on if they weren't doing something like really incredible as well. And I mean, I can like list off a number of them, but like the first person that comes to mind is like my big brother slash mentor on Rebecca. Like he's just such an incredibly motivated person who's always like striving to do amazing things. And like, you know, I, I give him shit 
because he like knows that he's really good at what he does and he's very cocky in that sense but it's in a good way because he's so self-assured and like so confident in himself and i really admire and value that and it's the same with you it's like i think you're so talented beyond means in so many things and i constantly tell it to you um but yeah like i think like it's just one of those things like it's 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 almost like it, it's known like people already know that you're good at certain things but like i would rather instead of complimenting you on it or doing anything in that regard i try to do more actionable things like introducing you to my friends or like talking about you like when you're not around or promoting you like through social media or other things like that where it doesn't feel like i'm being forced to do it it just comes naturally and so yeah that's kind of like my long-winded answer yeah i mean it's like it's true like i've met and back and like he is an idol love him yeah he's like, awesome. he's, he's super great yeah and you know i'm so happy and so lucky to have the privilege of like you know you introducing me to these individuals yeah and you know it's like similarly it's something that i do with the people that i love is you know like as i said earlier it's like just saying their names or saying what they're great at uh, around other people that I'm close to because I want them to know that I am friends with these awesome people. Yeah, I'm friends with somebody who knows so much stuff about music, yeah. who is like amazing at dad jokes and puns. You know, they're so good at it. Like their timing is impeccable. And I have a a friend who makes pins and jewelry, and it makes me proud that i know these people and it makes me even prouder to cheer them on because it's like i feel like i have the privilege of knowing these individuals i have the privilege of being part of their lives yeah and in turn all their talents all the things that they're good at i am impacted by yeah having that opportunity to cheer your friends on i feel like is a blessing because you're also telling the world what impact they've given or like they have in your life. Um, so with that being said, um, is there anything that you wouldn't add on or share with your audience? Yeah. Uh, no, I think you covered the basics of it. I think friendships are very important. And there's something that as I get older, I've started to really value more and cut you know, be a little bit more cognizant of in terms of like quality over quantity. And I think that's just like a cliche thing that happens as you get older, but I do really find the value in it based on these things that we talked about. And, um, yeah, I think if you're listening to this and you're younger or you're older, like, I think there's a lot of takeaways from it that can apply to everyone. And I think the main most important co concept of it is vulnerability and being, you know, as open with your friends as you can be, especially the ones that you hold really close to you. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I guess I wanted to say thank you for your friendship and, uh, I'm glad we got to do this episode to talk about it. I think that is a big component of my passion. And the big reason why I started this was because of you and our friendship. So I appreciate you for that. For those that don't know, Zai edits these with me and it's just, you know, it's been such a fun thing to do with him because I think this is also what has made our friendship, you know, just grow more because we're working on projects together and being creative together. So if you can do this with your friends, I think it's another way to kind of just enhance that friendship to another level. Um, and yeah, so with that being said, I'll just uh, close it off with saying I love you and I appreciate you. And um I, yeah, I can't wait to do another episode with you in the next two to three years where we talk about the next stage of our friendship. Yeah. And just in addition to that, if you do something creative with your friends and they get, you do like your connection or your interaction may not always be the best, but it's been such a great experience. How it's like, you know, our friendship is great. Doing this project, this passion project that you have is great. And I really enjoy 
and every time that we you know there's a new podcast or there's a new episode that you recorded like i see the excitement uh within you and in turn like i get super excited to like start working on it start editing it and it's one of those things that i really do seek approval because like obviously it's something that's going to be under your name Exactly. And it's been, you know, it's it's been a great ride so far. So hopefully we can do this longer. We can do more of these, um, whether I'm recording with you or I'm editing in the background, uh, because I do enjoy it. I do enjoy hearing uh, all of the things that you're passionate about and the people that you interview, uh, what they're passionate about. And I also get like such uh, selfish joy knowing that i'm one of the first people that heard it <laughs> yeah it's it's been great and uh yeah it's been a journey and it's cool to see how how much this has grown and like how much we've done in the last couple of years with it so yeah uh big props to zai for the editing uh, give him a shout out anytime he can for the stuff he does on here he's it's he's been an incredible motivation and help with me on this and it's been so fun doing it with him creatively and seeing like him get better at it and um yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and kind of uh end it on that um thanks again zaya for coming on here and interviewing me and uh thanks for hanging out and um we'll talk soon again all right love you guys bye, bye.